know there's a lot of change going on and a lot of opportunity going on for you in your business. And you've, you've had a couple of, uh, you have a couple of coffee shops and you're working on some new opportunities. So tell me uh, very briefly, what is, what, is, uh, what is your new opportunity that you're facing and how might I help you or how can we have a conversation of possibilities to help you to, to achieve your business objectives? Well, I've had, I've been approached in the last couple months. I've had two different people come forward and make an offer to buy both of our shops. Mm -hmm. And so we've looked at, you know, what transfer would look like if we even want to sell because we're not sure that we want to sell because we've put our heart and soul into that. And we've developed a recognizable brand and having, you know, somebody make an offer, it, at first it can be flattering. But then afterwards, when you look deeper into, into what all that would involve, and then where the, the business that we've built, where that potentially would go, it makes us step back and, and pause and say, is this really the best move for us to make at this time? Wonderful. That's very insightful. Because we can be uh, enamored in, by a profligate offer that, uh, that appears to answer all of our, of our immediate needs and maybe even some of our long-term needs. But then when we see that there's ramifications, you know, how will they change the business? What about the employees? What about the employee benefits? Uh, you know, because there's been some either explicit or implicit promises that employers typically make to their employees. That's very true. And that was one of our concerns was because we've had employees that have been with us now sometime more than five years, how would they be affected if we decided that we were going to sell? Mm -hmm. And also, the negotiation part when we sat down and first began dialogue, especially one gentleman who came highly recommended, apparently he was a person of means, but I very quickly got the idea that he was looking for a win-lose, where he was going to win and hopefully coming to come in and buy something for what he saw as a very good price, and I was expressing my concerns, and on the, on the front, or forefront, it appeared that he was listening, but then when I would say, well, this is what we're looking for, he would get dejected very quickly and say, oh, so what you're saying is you're not interested at all. And I would say, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. I said, in order for this deal to go through, this is what we would like to see. So him on the other side, instead of you know seeking win-win, he just had an idea of what he wanted. And if I wasn't interested, well, he was out for Right. So because you're in business with your wife and, you know, and you have some key employees. Have you have you structured much down? I, I mean, I most of us in business, particularly when we're operating growing businesses, all the plans, the budgets, the finances, most of it is changing so quickly. When it does get written down, it's out of date very quickly. And unless we're doing very high level strategic planning, maybe a year or two out. So have you have you looked? I know that you're working on a new venture that you've been discussing and, and talking about. And would you be able to move into that new venture? Uh, how would the new venture perhaps suffer a loss well, if you were to let go of this one early versus if you hold on to this? Uh, that it may help in that second venture. Is have you given any thought? To we that? have given thought to that because. The, the new venture that we've moved into is we've um, partnered with what has become the second largest weight loss platform in the world. And so we have paired with our coffee shop, we've also become a place where people can drive through or come in and get for lunch or any meal, get a meal replacement mm. instead of going drive, drive through and getting fast food. Mm. We don't necessarily need a coffee shop to promote that, but it helps mm -hmm. just because of the sheer volume of, of people that come through. So yes, that has, you know, weight on, on our decisions and, and different things that we're trying to accomplish. Wonderful. So if if you would some of the things that, that I may be able to offer you is we have services that we can run a set of books, a company set of books and compare you in your industry to other businesses in the same industry. Okay. Uh, by geographical region, either nationally or regionally. Uh, we can analyze and do ratio analysis for you, and we can put a dollar value on the business that's based upon an objective metric. 
Okay. And then over a period, then we can coach you through some changes perhaps and help you and support you in some of these decisions you're making and then 90 days from now, do another business evaluation okay. and see how the valuation has either gone up or gone down. Okay. So that's a way that, that uh, gives you an external metric. Now I want to emphasize that it is just a metric. When it comes to business valuations, it's very complex, but if you use the same metric several times in a row and you don't make changes in that metric, you will get some form of objective verification that's, that's different than a more subjective analysis that would come to you if you went and got an, a, an external appraisal of your business. And, and it's very costly to get an external uh, valuation. It can be quite costly. Right. So this is a way that's a low cost objective that you could measure beyond just looking at your profit and loss and balance sheet. Got it. Okay. So, and how we would do that is we would have a series of meetings and we would ex examine what is your budget and then what, we, what could you invest in, in the development and preparation of your business so that it's in the same way that you have a car, you keep your car washed, you keep the oil changed so that at any time someone makes an offer or you want to sell that car, it's ready to be sold. You do the same thing with your business and you always keep it in top shape. That way it's ready for sale and transfer at a moment's notice, you know, relatively speaking, right. 90 days. Right. <laughs> and yet, uh, and yet it's, it's easier to operate as you do that. So have you given any thought to, to the structure? I, I know you're working to develop your business, but in garnering external resources, I, I know you have an accountant. <coughs> yes, we do have an accountant, and um, I, I do have a friend who used to be in, in uh, commercial lending. Uh -huh. And I had I know what banks look at. Yes. Some some of what banks look at. He knows more what banks look at if somebody was to come and obtain financing. Mm -hmm. And I had, I had hired him as a consultant about a year and a half ago, but he's become busy with other things, and I can't say that he's done exactly what I hoped he would do. Mm -hmm. um, very cursory overview of, of, of what our numbers are, but he doesn't have as much an idea as I hope he had for our business. So once we decided that we weren't selling at this time, I just haven't given it much thought. I've been so busy, you know, rolling out different things we're working on. I just, you know, yes. haven't, haven't thought about it. hasn't been at the forefront of my thinking. Yes, excellent. Uh, it's completely understandable, that is. <laughs> the more ambitious a business owner is, in many ways, it, it forces you into being very, very tactical as right. opposed to strategic. Right. And by having a routine meeting where all we're going to do is be 90% strategic and 10% tactical compared to what a normal business owner is, 90 to 98% tactical and 2 to 10% strategic. By having that block of strategic time on a regular periodic basis. Right. And we would do it in a way we would build out your budget. And, and make sure that this is something that's practical and affordable for you. Okay. So, um, thank you very much, and let's uh, arrange a second meeting and we'll go further. Sounds good, thank you, John. Okay, at this point, we're going to entertain questions. So, Ray, why don't you stay for another minute? Uh, either questions, uh, this, is, this is a three-part uh, interpersonal communications project where I began with an explanation, then we did a role play, and now we're doing questions and answers. And basically it's about how to reach win-win situations, win-win agreements with people, where you listen and you engage the other person and you ask them what is really important for them, and then you express what are, is important for you. And in the case of being a consultant, my primary concern is I want to have a successful engagement with a client. Yes, Bob. I wanted to ask, what's the difference between strategic and tactical? Strategic is when you're looking at a long-term perspective, two to ten years per se, and these are relative terms. Tactical is short-term. Uh, the difference is in in strategy, you you're winning a war. You want to win a war, so you have a strategy to win the war. In tactics, it's how am I going to move my troops today, this week, this month so that I'm ready to, to, to take that next position that I want to, to achieve. Yes? Ray, during the interchange, uh, John asked you 
four partial questions. Did you get off track as to what it is he was asking at that point? Perhaps. Um, I, the partial questions, maybe you could elaborate a little bit. We started off with, um, have you looked at, have you thought about how it is that you're going to put all these things together? Then he stopped himself and started on with the, the same question, but it was just worded just slightly differently. And as I watched you, I saw you focus in harder and harder on John till he asked that fourth question, with, which was, what is it that you're actually uh, looking at doing? And then you were able to focus and, and, and answer that part of the question. I think the last question, what are you looking at doing, honestly, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But to answer the first question was, yes, I have looked at it. Right. Because I, I realized the value in how many people have a business that if they step away from it, it will, it will fail. And yeah. so we've worked very hard on ha building our business so that if we step away for a period of months, that the business keeps going, you know, without us. Mm -hmm. Just to just to have it run from that standpoint. Okay. But yes, I, I I was trying to track what he was saying in the time that he had. So yes. Okay. Just some feedback. Any other questions? <clears throat> yes, Lou. How much does your uh, Consulting costs the business. I, I work on a sliding scale. I make my services affordable to people. Uh, typically, uh, you know, it starts at, uh, be, between a hundred and several thousand dollars a month. Would, would you have previewed that with Ray before this um, interaction? Probably not. Uh, probably what we do is we net, then we look at the budget and see what is feasible in the budget. And I'm approaching a business owner who, who has employees. So someone who has five employees or more typically can afford and really needs these types of services. Thank you very much. Thank you.